Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Like people use elevators to move up and down floors in their daily lives, airplanes and fire jets do too. Sailors like those that move an FA-18E Super Hornet use specially made elevators on an aircraft carrier when moving the Super Hornet to and from its hangar bay. While typical aircraft carriers can hold a few airplanes up top, the majority of the aircraft must be held within the ship. These planes are held in the hangar bay, which is similar to a garage. Typically below the galley deck, some hangars can hold more than 60 aircraft at once. A hangar like the one on the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower may be three decks high, with four elevators surrounding it. When an aircraft is preparing for flight, members of the aviation boatswain's mates or the aircraft handlers work on board the aircraft carrier to check the jet and make sure it is fueled. The crew looks over the plane as much as three or four times to make sure everything is in working order. During the fueling and checking process, the deck may get extremely busy. Many modern aircraft carriers must be capable of launching an aircraft every 20 seconds, so the aviation boatswain's mates are on a time limit. When it comes to fueling the jet, not only do the handlers have to make sure everything is working properly, but they also have to make sure the fuel itself is clean while getting to the aircraft. If one person is not in their correct position, several seconds could be added when an aircraft is ready to launch. One of the many jobs that need to be done before the jet is launched is the loading of the drop tank. A drop tank is an external fuel tank carried by the jet to extend its flying range. Specific maintenance personnel trained to load the drop tank onto the outside of the jet must have the tank in its place before the jet takes off. The importance is to make sure that these tanks are serviceable for the jets so that when they need to go TDY or deploy or have an extended amount of travel, they're able to do that with extra bit of fuel. These drop tanks are loaded similarly to how weapons are loaded on aircraft. also known as ordnance. Weapons such as bombs and missiles are loaded onto the advanced weapons elevator from the magazine to the flight deck before being added to the jet in a specialized arming area.
Typically, the leader of the loading crew will carry a checklist to ensure everything is done properly. The deck of the aircraft carrier is often used to load or download an aircraft. This differs from the arming area, which is in a different location and used to arm the weapons. While the plane is in the arming area, crew members must be extremely cautious, and the space in front of the aircraft must be empty. On the deck, a jet blast deflector is used as a safety device to redirect the high-energy exhaust, preventing damage to other planes and injury to those around when a plane launches. Seen often in airports, these jet blast detectors keep aircraft that may be back-to-back -back on a runway from damaging the aircraft behind it. To launch an aircraft, many aircraft carriers use steam. The integrated catapult control system, or what is commonly referred to as the bubble, is a station that provides intercommunication during the aircraft launch. It is a main part of the launch process as the bubble is what controls the catapult system. Though many carriers can launch an aircraft without the use of the bubble, usage of the bubble makes the launch safer for all parties involved. On the other side of the ship sits the island, which is considered to be the head of the aircraft carrier and flight deck operations. This is where many things, such as radar and communication installations, can be found. Underway, shift colors! Right 30 degree rudder. Right 30 degree rudder eyes. 65 degree rudder eyes, sir. These may keep tabs on where other ships in the area are located. Around 150 feet tall, the island is usually made up of three floors. These, along with the radar and communication installations, house the primary flight control area and the bridge, where most of the flight control and ship control takes place. Aircraft carriers are some of the largest ships you'll see out on the water. In fact, the largest amphibious warship is said to resemble only a small aircraft carrier. Designed to be able to sail in harm's way, amphibious warships support humanitarian and other contingency missions as well as help in combat. They were created to support ground forces in enemy territory by the sea. The AAVs are actually what keeps the Marine Corps amphibious. Uh, it makes, it's what makes us different from every other branch because no other branch has a vehicle like the AAV. Larger deck amphibious assault ships are able to launch attacks from both the sea and the air. And some of the ships can even hold up to 1,800 troops. Though the ship can hold approximately 30 aircraft, the number is significantly smaller than an aircraft carrier. However, they make up for that by launching sea forces.
using interior well decks, these ships can provide anything from disaster relief to combat forces. Often seen at the ship's rear, a well deck is filled with water to launch and receive water vehicles. Thanks to this feature, ships must be designed to accommodate the ability to take on water, as well as the tanks that do the flooding. When not in use, well decks are kept dry. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.